Hey guys, welcome back to our series on the Book of Enoch. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the Book of Enoch, we've been talking about this extensively already throughout the series, so I'm not going to dive really into what it is, but just to briefly summarize, it is an ancient Jewish book. It was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. It was highly influential in ancient times, but has been forgotten in modern times, and the church doesn't really give it any credence. However, Jude quoted it directly and called it prophecy. Jesus referenced it and called it scripture. And we've just spent seven videos now looking at how highly influential it was on the writings of the New Testament and how much the apostles and Jesus quoted it and drew heavily from it. So this was a book that was extremely influential on the New Testament. It's something that the apostles and Jesus gave high credence to Jude called it prophecy, Jesus called it scripture. So if Jude is calling this book prophecy, Jesus is calling it scripture, and the apostles and Jesus were all teaching from it, then we need to stop following the traditions of men which tell us it's not scripture, and we need to start reading this book and giving credence to it just like they did. Because they should be our source for truth, not man's traditions. And we've looked at all of this very extensively already throughout this series. So if you're new to this series, please go back and start at the beginning of the series and watch through and hear my arguments out and hear all the different quotes that I'm reading from the book of Enoch and how I'm comparing that to what the New Testament says and showing that they're quoting this book all throughout the New Testament, or at least they're drawing heavily from it. Okay, however, in this video and in the next few videos, I'm gonna make some videos here that are a little bit different than what I normally do. But I want to show how this book, the book of Enoch, these books were telling the same story as other cultures. Like, it's not just that the New Testament confirms this book, but the histories of other cultures all match what this book says as well. In addition to that, there's still archaeological evidence that exists today on Earth that back up this story. So we're going to look at this story and then we're going to look at these other cultures and what they had to say and we're going to look at the evidence that still exists on earth to show that the things that the book of Enoch describes match not just the New Testament but it matches the evidence that still exists today in both history as well as archaeology. Okay, so first I want to just cover the story that is told in the book of Enoch. But I want to look at what this story is, give you an overview of the story, and then I want to show how this matches these other things. So to start off, we're going to look at Enoch chapter 6. And to give a brief summary, the story of the book of Enoch tells the story of how these angels in heaven saw that women were beautiful, human women were beautiful, they came down, they took wives for themselves, they had children, they taught their wives and their children all sorts of secret things that humanity was never supposed to know and these things all led to a ton of corruption they were consuming all of the resources of earth they got to the point where they consumed all the resources and they began devouring mankind as well because they were running out of food like this was a horrible horrible time to live and the book of enoch tells this story about how all this happened and then ultimately how god judged them and all of those things that whole story is told by other cultures of the ancient world. They all tell the same story. They use their own terminology and their own names for these different beings, but they all tell that story. Archaeology is beginning to unravel things like this, although it's not mainstream, but it's out there. There's proof of this. And there's a growing consensus in the world today where people are saying something happened in the ancient past. The secular world is turning to aliens, saying aliens have been on Earth, but the book of Enoch tells us what it really is. And it's really good for us to know this story because, first of all, it gives us an answer to these people who are arguing about aliens and ancient aliens, whatever it is. 
There is, there's a growing consensus among people that something happened in the ancient past and Christians don't have an answer because Christians don't read these books and they don't know these stories. They don't know that the Bible has an answer for these stories. Scripture has an answer for these stories, but they don't know it. And so they can't answer these people. And so it's really important for us to look at all this, but that is the story covered in the book of Enoch. And now I want to just read through it quickly and just give you some reference points throughout the story so you can follow along. So first I want to look at how the book of Enoch tell us about these angels who are called watchers who came down to earth, they married women, and they began teaching humanity all sorts of secret knowledge. That's the first essence of this story. So let's just dive in and look at what the book of Enoch says. Starting in chapter six, the book of Enoch says, and it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lusted after them and said to one another, come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men and beget us children. And Semhaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear you will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone will have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swore they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all two hundred who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. It then goes on to list out the names of their leaders. And there were 20 leaders in all. Each was a leader over 10. So 200 watchers came down. They swore an oath on Mount Hermon. That's why it's called Mount Hermon. They swore an oath on Mount Hermon that they were going to take wives for themselves and have children. Semhaza was the leader of the 200, but also the 200 were broken down into 20 groups of 10 and each group of 10 had its own leader. So 200 in all, and then there's these 20 leaders. So after listing out these leaders, it then says, and all the others together with them took unto themselves wives and each chose for himself one, and they began to go in unto them and to defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants. Skipping ahead, it says, and Azazel, he's one of these watchers. He's one of the leaders of a group of 10. Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the beautifying of the eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and all coloring tinctures. And there arose much godlessness and they committed fornication and they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways. Semhaza taught enchantments and root cuttings. Armoros, the resolving of enchantments. Barakial taught astrology. Kokabel, the constellations. Ezekiel, the knowledge of the clouds. Erechiel, the signs of the earth. Shamsiel, the signs of the sun. And Sariel, the course of the moon. And as men perished, they cried and their cry went up to heaven. So, we see here that these watchers came down, they married women, and they began teaching the secrets of heaven to these women and to their children. And we have a number of other references to this throughout these writings. For example, in chapter 9, the good angels, Michael and Gabriel and Raphael and Uriel, come to God and they're talking to God about all these things that are happening on earth. And one of the things they say is, You see what Azazel has done who has taught all unrighteousness on earth and revealed the eternal secrets which were preserved in heaven, which men were striving to learn. And Semhaza, to whom you've given authority to bear rule over his associates, and they have gone to the daughters of men upon the earth and have slept with the women and have defiled themselves and revealed to them all kinds of sin. So after these good angels come to God and ask God what he wants them to do, this is one of the things God says. Heal the earth which the angels have corrupted, and proclaim the healing of the earth, that they may heal the plague, and that all the children of men may not perish 
through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. And the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel. To him ascribe all sin. So once again, we see this reference to these watchers, one of whom is Azazel, who disclosed the secret things to their sons, to humanity, and who taught evil and wicked works to mankind. Once again, in chapter 12, we see a reference to this thing that the watchers did. It says, God says to Enoch, Enoch, you scribe of righteousness, go declare to the watchers of the heaven who have left the high heaven, the holy eternal place, and have defiled themselves with women and have done as the children of earth do and have taken unto themselves wives. And then he tells Enoch what to tell them. We're going to come back to this, but my point for now is just showing you this story of what happened. These watchers came, they, they took wives for themselves, and they taught mankind different things. In chapter 16, God sends Enoch to go talk to the watchers and tell them what his judgment is against them. And he says, And now as to the watchers who have sent you to intercede for them, who have been previously in heaven, say to them, You have been in heaven, but all the mysteries had not yet been revealed to you. And you knew worthless ones, and these, in the hardness of your hearts, you've made known to the women. And through these mysteries, women and men work much evil on earth. Say to them, therefore, you have no peace. So here we see an interesting little tidbit where God is saying that the secrets that these watchers taught were actually worthless secrets. These watchers did not yet know the true secrets of heaven, the true mysteries of heaven, which we're not even sure what he's talking about here, what the true secrets are, but we do know that he's saying the things that these watchers taught were actually worthless things, things that have now corrupted mankind, have corrupted the course of human history, but these were not the true secrets of heaven. They, they barely even knew anything, and they took these things and they gave them to mankind and have caused a ton of destruction, and God is saying, as a result, you have no peace. You were in heaven, you took the secrets you knew in heaven that mankind was not supposed to know. They weren't even good secrets because you didn't even know the full secrets yet, but you took these things and you gave them to mankind and that's why you're being judged and you will have no peace. Skipping ahead to chapter 65, we read this. A command has gone out from the presence of the Lord concerning those who dwell on the earth that their ruin is accomplished because they have learnt all the secrets of the angels and all the violence of the devils and all their powers, the most secret ones, and all the power of those who practice sorcery and the power of witchcraft and the power of those who make molten images for the whole earth, and how silver is produced from the dust of the earth and how soft metals originate in the earth. Because of their unrighteousness, their judgment has been determined upon and will not be withheld by me forever. Because of the sorceries which they have searched out and learnt, the earth and those who dwell upon it will be destroyed. And these, they have no place of repentance forever, because they have shown them what was hidden, and they are the damned. In chapter 69, it continues to list the different things that different watchers taught. It says, these are the chiefs of their angels and their names and their chief ones over hundreds and over fifties and over tens. The name of the first, Jekin, that is, the one who led astray all the sons of God and brought them down to the earth and led them astray through the daughters of men. And the second was named Asbeel. He imparted to the holy sons of God evil counsel and led them astray so that they defiled their bodies with the daughters of men. And the third was named Gadriel. He it is who showed the children of men all the blows of death, and he led astray Eve and showed the weapons of death to the sons of men, the shield and the coat of mail and the sword for battle and all the weapons of death to the children of men. And from his hand they have proceeded against those who dwell on the earth from that day and forevermore. And the fourth was named Penemue. He taught the children of men the bitter and the sweet, and he taught them all the secrets of their wisdom. And he instructed mankind in writing with ink and paper, 
and thereby many sinned from eternity to eternity and until this day. For men were not created for such a purpose, to give confirmation to their good faith with pen and ink. For men were created exactly like the angels, to the intent that they should continue pure and righteous, and death, which destroys everything, could not have taken hold of them, but through this their knowledge they are perishing, and through this power it is consuming me. And the fifth was named Kazdeja. This is he who showed the children of men all the wicked smiting of spirits and demons, and the smiting of the embryo in the womb that it may pass away, and the smiting of the soul, the bites of the serpent, and the smiting which befall through the noontide heat, the son of the serpent named Tabiat. Okay, so through all of this, we can see this story presented in the book of Enoch, which is telling the story of these angels that came down from heaven, they married women, and they taught those women and their children all these secrets. And those secrets are things that led to corruption on earth and led to men practicing unrighteousness. That is a huge part of this story, which is reflected in all sorts of ancient mythology and ancient cultures, and is also seen in archeological finds today. And we're gonna to get to all of that a bit later. But the next part of the story is talking about how the children of these watchers were giants. And I wanna look at that. Back in Enoch chapter seven, it's talking about how these watchers took for themselves wives. And it says, and they became pregnant and they bare great giants whose height was 3000 L's, who consumed all the acquisitions of men. And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Chapter nine, verse nine says, and the women have borne giants and the whole earth has thereby been filled with blood and unrighteousness. In chapter 15, God is addressing the watchers and he says, Why have you left the high, holy, and eternal heaven and lain with women and defiled yourselves with the daughters of men and taken to yourselves wives and done like the children of earth and begotten giants as your sons? So throughout these writings, we see this reference to these giants over and over again, where these watchers came down, they married women, they had children, those children were giants. Okay, so it's saying that there was this time in the ancient past prior to the flood where giants were on the earth. Now, if you read this story, it's clear that this was not just a short period of time. This went on for hundreds of years where these giants were on the earth. And in that first passage of Enoch, we can see that it says, these giants consumed all the acquisitions of men, and when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. So these giants were consuming all the resources of earth. And when it eventually got to the point where they could no longer sustain these giants, the giants turned on mankind and began devouring mankind themselves. And we're gonna come back to this where we look at how a lot of these other cultures, when they talk about giants, they describe them as cannibals. So we've got this story here in the book of Enoch where it talks about there were giants on the earth in the ancient days. Now the Old Testament, anybody who's read the Old Testament is familiar with the, the stories of giants in the Old Testament. But a lot of Christians speculate about these giants and make up their own ideas about who these giants were and where they came from, but they don't know that there are ancient texts given to us that tell us exactly who these beings were. Who were the Nephilim? The book of Enoch, it tells us these things. We need to stop making up our own ideas and we need to look at what the ancient texts say and go off of that. But finally, to finish up the story that is told, the rest of the story is that eventually God issues a judgment against these watchers and against these giants. And the, the judgment he says is, he says the watchers are going to be bound in darkness, but first they're going to watch their children, these giants, all kill each other. So the children of these watchers, these giants who are consuming the earth, all start fighting each other in a giant cataclysmic war that wreaks a ton of destruction and they all slaughter each other. And then after they watch their children all slaughter each other, then these watchers are bound 
in darkness awaiting judgment day where they then are eventually led away to their final judgment. And we can see all of this beginning in chapter 10 of the book of Enoch. The Lord said to Raphael, bind Azazel hand and foot and cast him into the darkness and make an opening in the desert, which is in Dudael, and cast him therein, and place upon him rough and jagged rocks, and cover him with darkness, and let him abide there forever, and cover his face, that he may not see light. And on the day of the great judgment he will be cast into the fire, and heal the earth which the angels have corrupted, and proclaim the healing of the earth, that they may heal the plague, and that all the children of men may not perish, through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. And the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel. To him ascribe all sin. And to Gabriel, said the Lord, proceed against the bastards and the reprobates, and against the children of fornication, and destroy the children of fornication and the children of the watchers from among them, and cause them to go out. Send them one against the other, that they may destroy each other in battle, for length of days will they not have. And no request that they, their fathers, make of you will be granted unto their fathers on their behalf. For they hope to live an eternal life, and that each of them will live five hundred years. And the Lord said unto Michael, Go, bind Samhaza and his associates who have united themselves with women so as to have defiled themselves with them in all their uncleanness. And when their sons have slain one another and they've seen the destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast for seventy generations in the valleys of the earth until the day of their judgment and of their consummation, until the judgment that is forever and ever is consummated." In those days they will be led off to the abyss of fire, and to the torment and the prison in which they will be confined forever. And whosoever will be condemned and destroyed will from then on be bound together with them to the end of all generations. And destroy all the spirits of the reprobate and the children of the watchers, because they have wronged mankind. Destroy all wrong from the face of the earth, and let every evil work come to an end." So in chapter 10, we can see God is saying to bind the watchers, to cast them into darkness, and that the children of the watchers should be turned against one another in war and fight each other in battle and wipe each other out. He says again in chapter 12, Enoch, you scribe of righteousness, go, declare to the watchers of the heaven who have left the high heaven, the holy eternal place, and have defiled themselves with women, and have done as the children of earth do, and have taken unto themselves wives, you have wrought great destruction on the earth, and you will have no peace nor forgiveness of sin, and inasmuch as they delight themselves in their children, the murder of their beloved ones will they see, and over the destruction of their children will they lament and will make supplication unto eternity, but mercy and peace will you not attain. Once again, part of their judgment is that they're going to see their children wipe each other out in war. This is really important to what we're going to come back to when we look at other stories from other cultures and also some of the archaeological evidence that still exists on earth today. There was an ancient cataclysmic war between a advanced race of giants that once lived on earth. And we can see that when we look at other cultures and when we look at archaeological evidence, we can see that this story told in the book of Enoch is true. And we're going to come back to this. But to continue reading about their judgment, in chapter 13, Enoch went and said, Azazel, you will have no peace. A severe sentence has gone out against you to put you in bonds, and you will not have toleration nor request granted to you because of the unrighteousness which you have taught, and because of all the works of godlessness and unrighteousness and sin which you have shown to men. Enoch then goes to the rest of the watchers, and he tells them, your petition will not be granted unto you throughout all the days of eternity, and that judgment has been finally passed upon you. Yea, your petition will not be granted unto you. 
And from now on, you will not ascend into heaven unto all eternity. And in bonds of the earth, the decree has gone out to bind you for all the days of the world. And that previously, you will have seen the destruction of your beloved sons, and you will have no pleasure in them, but they will fall before you by the sword. And your petition on their behalf will not be granted, nor yet on your own. Even though you weep and pray and speak all the words contained in the writing which I have written. Again, they will see the destruction of their beloved sons. They will fall before them by the sword. There is a destruction that was going to come to the children of the watchers, the giants. They were going to fall in battle. They're going to fight a war against one another and all wipe each other out. In chapter 15, we see a little bit more about what happens to those giants after they die. It says, And now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh will be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on the earth will be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies, because they are born from men, and from holy watchers is their beginning and primal origin. They will be evil spirits on earth, and evil spirits will they be called. As for the spirits of heaven, in heaven will be their dwelling. But as for the spirits of the earth, which were born upon the earth, on the earth will be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle and work destruction on the earth and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses. And these spirits will rise up against the children of men and against the women because they have proceeded from them. So in this passage, we see this very interesting thing where it's talking about these giants after they die because their fathers were watchers from heaven, but their mothers were humans from earth. They neither belong in heaven or on earth. And so they are going to be these unclean spirits which wander the earth and basically cause a bunch of problems for mankind for the rest of history. And this is really interesting because in the New Testament, we keep reading about Jesus casting out demons and the apostles casting out demons and all these demons on the earth who are called unclean spirits. And the church today teaches people that demons are fallen angels. That's not what it says. People don't know who demons are because they don't read the texts that are given to us. The book of Enoch plainly tells us that demons are the spirits of the giants after they die. They don't have anywhere else to go, so they roam the earth. They can't eat or drink, nevertheless, they're hungry and thirsty. That's where the demons come from. They are the spirits of the giants once they died in ancient times. Continuing on in chapter 67, it says, He will imprison those angels who have shown unrighteousness in that burning valley. That valley of the angels who had led astray mankind burned beneath that land, and through its valleys proceed streams of fire where these angels are punished who had led astray those who dwell upon the earth. So we keep seeing this description of this judgment against these watchers and against the giants, where the watchers had to watch their children wipe each other out in a massive war, and then the watchers are going to be bound in darkness and bound in fire. And then in chapter 68, we see Michael, who's one of the good angels, talking to Raphael about this. And what's interesting about this story is Michael is, he is an extremely powerful angel, okay? When we go back and we look at when God issued these decrees, we see that he told Raphael to go bind Azazel. He told Gabriel to go do something. He told Uriel to go do something. And then he tells Michael, this one guy, to go bind all of the angels that fell, all of the watchers that fell. Michael's in charge of binding all of them. There were 200 of them, and Michael alone was sent to do it. Okay, so my point just being Michael is a powerful, powerful being. And yet, when he sees this judgment that's issued against the Watchers, the things that they are punished with, Michael says in chapter 68, the power of the Spirit transports and makes me to tremble because of the severity of the judgment of the secrets, the judgment of the angels, 
Who can endure the severe judgment which has been executed and before which they melt away? Who is he whose heart is not softened concerning it and whose reins are not troubled by this word of judgment that has gone out upon them because of those who have so led them out? And it came to pass when he stood before the Lord of Spirits, Michael said this to Raphael, I will not take their part under the eye of the Lord. For the Lord of Spirits has been angry with them because they do as if they were the Lord. Therefore, all that is hidden will come upon them forever and ever. For neither angel nor man will have his portion in it, but alone they have received their judgment forever and ever. So here we have Michael, this extremely powerful being, this extremely mighty being saying, I am trembling when I look at what happened to them, when I look at the judgment that they received for what they did. Like Michael himself is literally shaking in his boots over how extraordinary this judgment was against these angels that fell. So we see this story repeated throughout these ancient writings where it talks about these watchers from heaven. These were angelic beings in heaven, came down to earth, they married among humanity. They married women. They had children. These children were giants. There was this time period that appears to have lasted for at least 500 years or so, because it talks about how the lifetime of the giants, they wanted them to live forever, but it was going to be cut short at 500 years. So it would appear that there was a time period of about 500 years or half a millennium in which these giants are on the earth, they're consuming everything, they're teaching all sorts of knowledge and secrets and things that mankind was never supposed to know. They consume all the resources of the earth and it all culminated in this cataclysmic war in which the giants all wiped each other out all across the world. Their fathers, the watchers, had to watch as their children, these giants, wipe each other out in a cataclysmic war. So at this point, there's been 500 years of these giants essentially ruling the earth, and it's all going to end with a war in which they slaughter each other. And then those watchers would be bound forever in darkness, awaiting judgment, at which point they are led away to a lake of fire. So this is the story told in the book of Enoch. That's what I want you to take away from this video, is this is the story that is told. And the reason this is important is because in the next couple of videos, we're going to look at how this exact same story is told in other cultures in ancient times. They were telling these stories that we now consider mythology, but it's the same stories as this. And those cultures at that time, they didn't think of it as mythology. They saw it as history. They saw it as actual events that actually occurred and they were telling the stories of what happened. And sure, maybe they got embellished over time, but the point is the, the root of those stories is the same thing that Enoch says, this actually happened. And the New Testament testifies of Enoch saying, this is scripture, this is truth. Jesus and the apostles taught from this book, they called it prophecy, they called it scripture. They referenced this story directly and they said, this is a true thing that happened. So now when we look at these other cultures and we see these same stories, we need to recognize that those are not myth. Those are actual historical events that occurred told from the pagan perspective when we look at these other cultures. And then we're also going to look at how archaeologically there's a lot of evidence for these things to have occurred. There's a lot of proof, a lot of evidence, which is still available, something that we can see today on earth, there is proof that something happened in ancient times that doesn't fit our modern understanding of ancient history. So I want you to be familiar with the story, and that's why I'm reading these passages, so you can see how the book of Enoch tells this story. This is the Jewish perspective of what happened in the ancient world. The pagan perspective is very different. They call the watchers gods. They call these beings their heroes and, and their gods of old, okay? Like the, their perspective is very, very different. They talk about the secrets that the watchers taught and they're proud of it. And they say, you know, these, these guys came and they taught us all sorts of great knowledge and information that we are now thriving on. The Jewish perspective was, no, that was all evil and wicked, and that is where all of the trouble on earth comes from. Because these 
beings came down and taught us how to make weapons and make warfare and make enchantments and make, make, make all sorts of things that mankind was never supposed to do. So that's the story presented in the ancient Jewish texts. In the book of Enoch, that's the story that is told. And I want you to be familiar with that first before we move forward and we look at how these ancient cultures were all telling the same story. So we're going to start looking at that in the next video. What did the cultures of the ancient world have to say about their history? What did they say happened? And we're going to show that they're saying the same thing. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for uh, hearing me out as we look at what the Book of Enoch has to say. And now moving forward, we're going to look at some of these other cultures and what they had to say about what had happened in the ancient past. So thanks for joining and I hope you find all of this very helpful and I'll see you in the next video.